welcome to My Victorian Heart. I'm Kimberly, and tonight we are going to be creating with Island Orchid Design's beautiful new IOD paint inlays, and specifically we'll be using the Rose Shents paint inlay. And we're also going to um, use them to make this cute oval decor piece um, with a Jane Austen vibe. And I already made this, so um, before we get started, I'll just let you know um, what you'll be needing for your um, your materials. Um, you'll be needing a Rose Shins Inlay by Iron Orchid Designs, or you could use the Indigo Floral Inlay. And here is what it looks like in the package. I'm sorry about the glare. And there's the back. Um, there are eight sheets, 12 by 16 inches each. And there are instructions back here, but I'll also post a... Um, step-by-step -step instructional document on the web page under tutorials at myvictorianheart.com that will tell you everything you need to know about using IOD's brilliant new paint inlays. So I'll put that back. And um, the other thing is um, we'll be using the IOD cameo mold, which I pre-made the mold because I didn't want to take up too much time trying to make everything. And, um, but this is what the Iron Orchid Designs Cameos mold looks like. It is a superb quality. Um, IOD molds have the micro rim, which give you a good, clean, crisp edge on your molds. And they also have little tiny measurements noted next to each design in um, grams and milliliters. So you can measure out how much clay you need in grams or how much liquid, let's say liquid resin or whatever you would use. Um, so that's actually really handy because it helps prevent waste of your materials. And the other mold that we've used for this project is the beautiful IOD frames mold. And that also um, has the micro rims and the measurements. And I mean, these are just so pretty. And I actually have a pan. I made these last night and I froze them and I took them out of the freezer about 30 minutes ago. So these will be going on our project. And let's see, what else did I want to tell you? Ah, so we'll, we'll be using IOD's wood gallery blanks for one of the um, projects that we're putting cameos and stuff on. And this one is the, um, it's about three and a half by five and a half. And it also has this recessed kind of shadow box style. So you can either use this side or you can use this like a like a blank gallery canvas. And they're amazing quality wood blanks. You don't even I've never even had to sand any that I've had from them. They're amazing. So here's one that I um, pre-painted. We're gonna apply this inlay onto here tonight so we can show you how to apply them. And these inlays have already been applied. Um, this is an IOD wood gallery blank with a um, rose chintz inlay already applied and we're going to show you how to remove your inlay and this is a um, five by five inch wooden blank that I got at Michael's. Um, I've made a lot of stuff over the years with these. I don't know if they still carry these. these I got them last year but um, this one also has an inlay on it and um, we are going to decoupage a Jane Austen um, old book page from Pride and Prejudice, and it's going to be framed in this large frame, and it's going to be placed on our oval frame, and I think that would be really cute. We're doing some book lover gifts kind of tutorials tonight, so that way if you know a book lover or a Jane Austen fan, then this is perfect gift for Christmas or whatever holiday you like to celebrate. And let's see, this one is has a Jane Austen silhouette that I printed out on a laser printer and I reversed the image in my software and then I decoupaged her on, I did a, um, a medium, a gel medium transfer. But you know, you could just cut it out, kind of like die cut it out and also glue it on. You don't have to do a gel medium transfer. 
but I've been doing transfers on stuff for years and they're kind of neat because it's it's like the gel medium takes the ink from your printed paper and it needs to be a laser printer um, and it transfers the ink onto your surface so you don't have like a bulky edge from cutting and but you know it's not a big deal because if you decoupage it then you can always blend your paint around the edges or do aging mediums. There's so many ways to hide little edges and boo-boos with stuff. And um, I think maybe that was it about the project. So I wanted to let you know what you need again. So you'll need an IOD frames mold if you want to complete any of these items, um, a Cameos mold by IOD, and also we will be needing the IOD paint inlays, which you can choose from the rosy rose scents design are the blue and indigo floral, which is really pretty. It's a gorgeous, I think maybe this type of floral pattern is known as chinoiserie. I'm no, I know I don't say that properly, but um, this is really pretty. I cannot wait to make something with this one too. So, um, and the other thing about the inlays I wanted to tell you is they come in sheets that are not in an attached tear-off type of pad like the IOD transfers do. And to um, let you know, the paint inlays are not transfers, they're not decals, they're not rub-ons. This um, actually has paint on it. Let me get a larger piece. So, this is one I've already used. But, um, this is what they look like and the inlay um, is actually embedded artisan quality paint on here so when you apply it to your surface you apply it to wet paint a good coating of wet paint and we'll get started and I'll show you how to do that on here okay so we're just gonna um, Move this one out of the way and start off with the little one. Okay, so I have my favorite paint here. And get my opener. My husband is my technical support in helping me out. He's such a trooper. He's my biggest champion. He always helps me with stuff. I don't think he knew what he was getting into when he got me. And before I forget, my website is myvictorianheart.com and I am located in St. Augustine, Florida. I am online only. I do not have a storefront. And I um, pride myself on fast shipping and everything is always very thoughtfully packaged. Um, it's like getting a gift from us when you buy from us. And we really hope that you'll give us an opportunity to, you know, share these gifts of creative joy with you. All right, let me just um, get a, a little coating of paint on this right here. Even though it's pre-painted, I have to add wet paint in order to apply the inlay. And I wanted to show you guys how that works. So you need a... Um, a mineral based paint like a chalky type of finish paint and um, I use um, I've been a fan of the Annie Sloan paint forever I don't sell paint and I don't offer it in my store but I do use a lot of paint so I really love hers I'm a huge fan I think it's great and I really just love it. This is the color Old White. I mean, she truly is a favorite, so I hope I'm allowed to talk about that. that I, I'm never really sure about those kind of rules with this product stuff, but I try my best. And, the, you know, this kind of paint is a little bit streaky because it's thicker, but we need some thick coats of paint to properly transfer the ink the painted design from the inlays onto your surface. 
All right, I think that's good. So I kind of like the way this little piece is draping down. So you just want to go ahead and line it up and press it on there and keep it taut. And don't slide it around too much because you don't want your imprinted paint inlay design to smear on your surface. And then you can just sort of press it and rub it. I give it like a really gentle, light rub. Um, I'm using the IOD paint blade. And I like these because they don't drag on the paper like a, a plastic thin Nero card or other implement. Um, the other thing that is really amazing is to use the IOD rolling brayer, the brayer. Um, they have really come up with some great products. I truly am a fan. Before I was a stockist, I was a de devoted fan. And I still am. I, I'm a customer just like you guys, and I just adore this company and their products. They're very, they're just amazing. And the new paint and laser are genius because it lays down a painted design that looks like you painted it on your own piece. And if you're like me, I can't draw stick people. So this is like a major gift. I love it. Okay, so I have that on there. And the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my linen cloth and um, I have a little a little spritzer here. You need um, a little water bottle that does a nice fine mist of spray. And just give it a little mist. You don't have to go too crazy with it. And I just press down, smooth it out. You may see some wrinkles on your paper, but it's really not a big deal. If you, if you go like this, you can kind of press them out, but don't overwork it too much because you don't want to blur your design and the wet paint in there. And then IOD recommends that you let the paint inlays sit. Um, they say 10 minutes, maybe 30. I've had to leave mine longer, but I think that's because I live in humid North Florida and paint just takes a long time to dry. Um, so for instance, I painted this yesterday and applied this early afternoon yesterday and I left it since because I did another one and I felt like it wasn't long enough so I think it's just the time that you leave your paint and lays on your wet paint and to dry depends on your environmental conditions the kind of paint you used so um, those are a couple things to factor and I would suggest testing a small piece before you go big like on a piece of furniture you know, test it out, see how long it takes, see how it reacts with your favorite paint before you go crazy. And let me just move this paint out of the way before I knock it over or spill it. I'm like such a clutch, so. I have like this giant mallet. <laughs> Okay, so the next thing I want to do is take one of the small pieces that I put an inlay on last night and we're going to wet it down and then we're going to gently, slowly begin to peel the inlay carrier paper off. And you want to go slow and you want to spritz it down with your fine use water bottle. Get the paper good and wet on there. I'm getting my word paper all wet. <laughs> okay, so. Hold on, I think it needs just a little bit more. So we want to let it absorb for about 30 seconds or a minute. So I'm going to just press it in. Oh, 
feels like it's really on there. Oh, it's lifting up. So if it starts lifting up, um, I'll just show you right here. If you can see. I don't know if you guys can see that. Is anybody making me? Oh, hey, Carol. Hi, Teresa. You guys are so sweet. <laughs> Thank you for being here. I was thinking no one would be here but my husband, which is okay. <laughs> He's giving me a dirty look. So, but thank you guys. It means a lot to me. So look, it's peeling up okay. These are so amazing. I know I keep saying that, but oh my goodness. For a person who is not like an artist, these are amazing. I think they need a little more water here. So you just sort of gauge it as you go and don't force it. You don't want to have paper stuck on there. Then that's a pain to remove. Okay, so this is kind of funny. This is actually a recycled poo-pourri bottle. <laughs> I had a spray bottle, but it sprayed water like a fire hydrant. And this one actually has a really good fine mist. So I'm using this. <laughs> and I covered it with my, my stickers because I didn't want people to see. But hey, I told you, so now you know. <laughs> Oh my gosh, you gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, so there we go. Look at that. Can you guys see this? Okay, I'm new at this, so I'm not sure how well you guys can see everything. Look at that. Is it good? Oh my goodness. That is so pretty, huh? And I painted the sides like a sage green with um, a folk art. Italian sage and I got this a long time ago. I don't even know if they still have that or call it that color but PlaidOnline.com does the folk art and Michael's Hobby Lobby Day. I'll carry these paints. So does Amazon So maybe you can find it. I hope I get more because I'm on myself Okay, the next thing you want to know about the new IOD paint inlays is when you remove your your carrier paper that still has paint inlay color on it you don't have to stop at one use with the inlays. You can use it a second time. So I could actually take um, this other gallery blank and I could paint it and I could apply the used paint inlay and use it a second time and still get a colorful floral image. Maybe not as colorful, but you may, maybe a little shabby. And then you can actually use it a third time and get a really neat shabby pastel look, which I love. And so don't forget, these literally can be used three times, so third time's a charm. And I'm gonna um, let this sit and dry over here. And um, you wanna just take your, your carrier paper that you have removed while it's still wet and lay it to dry flat. And that way you can use it again. Okay, so this is done and well, it's not really done. This is what we have to do. Um, the paint on here is probably still wet, so you have to let it dry. And um, I have not personally tried drying these with a heat gun or a dryer yet. But um, after your paint inlay dries, you want to spray seal it or just let it dry long enough so that you can do a hand applied um, brushed on sealer and use a water-based polyacrylic type sealer. Um, I personally love the golden gel medium which is great for decoupage, it's great for sealing stuff and um, I also like Amy Howard's um, sealer and I don't think I have it over here to show you but I love hers, it's great and it's water-based and it does it works like a charm but um, this transferred beautifully and I'm gonna just touch a little tiny edge see how wet it is it actually doesn't feel very wet okay so this is what we're gonna do we're gonna dry it for like a few seconds oh you know what I need to be plugged in am I not plugged in nope <laughs> thank you honey So this is new to me drying these. I mean, I'm I'm thinking these are better off being air dried and 
having patience, but for the, the purpose of a tutorial, let's do what we got to do here. And I have a rule about the heat guns. If I hold it to my hand and it's too hot on my skin, it's probably too hot on my project because we can burn and melt stuff on projects. So I try to kind of keep it at a distance. So. All right. My paint inlay feels okay. It feels dry enough for me to go ahead and apply a mold and um, a cameo. So on this one, I had planned on doing one of these cute frames. And I made the um, frames last night, like I told you earlier, because it just takes a long time to roll out all this stuff for me, you know, and I don't want to, I want to get this done for you guys. So the other thing is this, this frame is, let's show you the mold. This one is from here. And as you can see, it has this little middle part. So I cut it out with a knife. And you know what I'm going to do with this? I'm going to make a mini book page from Jane Austen, and I'm going to put it on here. And this is going to go on one of my cute little blank projects. Um, I thought that would be fun. Um, so this frame is going to house a small cameo right on here. And this actually needs to get painted or waxed before it can go on our block. So we can do that really quick. It's so little it won't take too long. Just brush off the cornstarch and the goo. And the other thing I wanted to say, um, I used this little fine paring knife and it cut really nicely. Um, I couldn't find my exacto knife. My craft room, I have taken every, a lot of everything out because I'm redoing it and we have a leak on our floor or wall or something. So I'm having to do all this stuff in here and couldn't find the X-Acto knife. I don't know what I did with it. Okay. I'm just smoothing the little in, inside edge where I cut it, you know? And you can actually take um, a nail file or sandpaper and fine-tune your edges on your mold. Okay, and this darling little cameo is like, um, let me see if I can get closer, it's like a rose, and it came from the IOD cameos mold, and oops, I just bent it, okay, and there it is right there, if you can see that okay, I'll pop that out, there you go. And I thought it would be really cute on here. And now I want to just give it a little color wax. So I have some waxes over here in my little. There we go. Little tray. Everything's silver. <laughs> Look, where's my other wax? gold wax. Ah, there it is. <laughs> okay, I have rub and buff anti-gold, which will brush a little bit of that after we paint this. And we need a little paintbrush, so these little brushes are perfect for these tiny little deals. And also, I love the little angled ones, because you can get into the little details of the tiny molds. And I'm going to use that Italian Sage by Plaid Folk Art on this. And you don't need too much. So, what time is it, sweetie? How much? I was trying to keep this to an hour. If I go a little bit over, um, I think we have 34 minutes left if I keep it at one hour. So, I am just kind of going over this whole little
cameo with the green. It's kind of like a vintagey, sagey green, and I just love sage green. I have walls in my house painted pale sage green, and our front door, I just love this color. <laughs> Does anybody have any questions or anything like that? Oh, is that Christina? Hi, Leah. My granddaughter said hi. Leah, love of my heart, I miss you. I'm going to try to make you something for El with Elsa on it. Okay? Gigi promises. Oh, my gosh. I have the cutest granddaughter. She is a darling strawberry blonde with curly. Oh, her hair is beautiful. She has her mommy's pretty hair. And then I have Kellen, my grandson, and Alden, and they're all little people, and they're so cute. They live far away, though. I don't get to see them very much. And my daughter is expecting her first baby. She's my oldest child, and she's expecting uh, Thanksgiving week. So we'll have a little turkey baby coming. And, um... I don't know, I have four grown children and my youngest are twin boys and they are 21 now, they're seniors in college. And it's just crazy. You wake up one day and your babies are grown. That's shocking, okay. This is nice and painted and I'm not gonna paint the back since it's gonna get glued on and we're gonna use um, Tight Bond Quick and Thick. Um, I also like to use E6000 but it's, really fumy and it can be really bad for you and I really don't like to use it too much. And the other thing I want to do is I'm going to take a little piece of tissue and dab it in the water and I want to wipe away just a little bit of the green paint over the rose on that little cameo. I don't want it to be all green on the rose. And I think I am going to touch it up with a little bit of pink. I love green and pink together, so let me um, grab, I have different kinds of pinks in her. I have a pearl pink. I love Martha Stewart's craft paints. Um, baby pink, baby pink. Nope, I don't want to do that one. Poodle Skirt by Martha. I don't know. I think it needs a touch of pearl pink. So I'll do that one. Uh, I really didn't plan on the pink for this. Jill but... is on the line too. <gasps> Jill, hey! Hi, thank you for being here. My sister-in-law from Long Island is here. I miss you guys. How is everybody? Tell Cameron and the girls hi for me. And Nello too. You guys are so sweet. Thank you for coming to see me. So this is the, the Martha Stewart Pearl paint. And this is her... Um, multi-surface paint. You can paint glass and all kinds of stuff. Oh, Jill just said hi to you. <laughs> he, he's hiding behind the camera. My, my technical advisor is hiding. He's so sweet to help me with this stuff. I would, I would not get it done without him. <laughs> that would be for sure. He's so sweet. He puts up with all my crafty shenanigans. He has schlepped my stuff for me to vintage markets and shows, and he's great. All right, I'm taking too long on a tiny cameo. All right, there you go. I don't know if you can see. It's cute, pearly pink. I like it. I like it a lot. I always say that with my, my friend Lori. Okay, for the frame... Okay, I really 
want to just kind of give it a little color wash. So I'm not going to saturate that with too much of the green, but I'm going to put a little bit on there. Wash my brush out. And I um, didn't know if you could see this. This is my messy ink well, uh, no, water well for the art. And it has a place to put brushes and it has little ridges in it to like scrub your stuff. I've had that for years, I love it. All right, we're just gonna go quickly over this frame. Whoops, wrong color. I just dipped it in pink. Okay, go over there. We're gonna give it a quick little um, coating. So I am very new at doing this live tutorial stuff. I've been crafting for years and I was an Etsy seller with two shops for seven, seven years from 2012, 11, October, 2011 to 2019. And then I got my own website. I got off Etsy. I, I, um, and before that, I was on eBay. I've been doing e-commerce for a good 20 years and crafting and stuff like that. So it's something close to my heart that I love to do. But I'm very new at being in the public eye and being on a live video. I'm learning as I go. Okay, this is just about painted. I don't know how people do big old pieces on a one hour tutorial. <laughs> they must be good because this is taking me forever to do the tiny one. Is Martha Stewart paint? You know, I have seen it um, in a couple of places and um, I think Amazon has it. I think I actually just saw it on there. So you could go look around. Um, this is great. It's an acrylic based multi service paint. It's good on wood, glass, metal, and fabric, indoor and outdoor. I mean, this is great craft paint. I love it. True favorite. Okay, just a little more. I got some white spots, but. I was going to kind of rub it off anyway, so it doesn't matter. Okay. So, I just want to rub a little bit of that paint off gently so I don't mess up my clay mold shape. I want this to look like a, a cute, shabby, chic kind of frame. Just rub the raised edges and we're going to put a touch of gold on it too. Nothing crazy or anything. Okay, so I don't know if you guys can see that, but I didn't really make it dark or anything. Can you see it, sweetie? Okay, yeah. in mm -hmm. there? Okay, let's um, get this paint off my finger. Okay. We're gonna, I love this nozzle on the tight bond. It's really handy dandy. It doesn't like, it's not like with the tacky glue bottle or the E6000 and when you squeeze it, it doesn't like keep running out like it does with the others. So is what I do is after I get this on here, put the cap back on before I lose it. I take a, um, a brush not like one of my best brushes just an old brush and I brush and even out the glue so it's evenly distributed on the back of your piece because um, you want good adherence especially with the molds because they can kind of pop up on edges and when they dry and if you have cracks appear it's it's okay you can get that agey old cracky look but then if you want to fill them in you can take a wet soft brush and just sort of smooth your clay and repair it or even fill it in with a 
like a little sludge that you make from water and clay. All right, put that in the water. So we're gonna put this in the center of this frame. And I'm eyeballing it here. Just straighten out my frame a little bit. And I got a little blob of glue right there. All right, that's on there nice. And I didn't seal this yet, as you guys might notice. <laughs> I probably will go in around these. It's just we're time on time constraints here. So, but I think it would behoove us to seal this really properly before you do anything. But we're gonna see how it goes. We're gonna learn together. Let me get my glue brush. My glue brush. Yeah. yeah. Now we're gonna do a little rose cameo on there. Easy peasy, if I can do this, anybody can do this. If you can paint and roll out dough, you can make these beautiful molds. Okay, so we're just gonna, and you know, if I were doing this like not in a tutorial, I would, paint the um I would wax and add the color waxes and stuff to the frame and the cameo individually before I put them on the project but um I just want to get it done so you guys can see it and then this is a little tight in there I tried it last night and I think maybe they just sort of draw up as they dry or something I don't know but you can just sort of tweak them as you go and not lose their shape too much or anything. So, there we go. And you can just... And if you need to go back in and fix anything... Whoops, I got too much water on that. Soak it up. There we go, perfect. Now, we wanna um, do a little bit of wax really quick and put this back on here. I swear I'm gonna lose that cap one day. It's not attached to my head, it's not gonna last long. And this is the rub and buff. You really don't need much, just a teeny bit goes a long way. So I just like put a teeny little dab. This is my, my messy art palette. Literally. I just let everything dry on there and then I clean it later. So we just want to do like a light brushing with the gold over the little details and we're also going to go over it with some aging medium a little bit to give it some character And the other thing I'm going to do for this um, frame, this cute little decor piece, is we can hang it a couple of ways. And I have these little, um, the little frame hooks, like a triangle shape that you can put back here. And I also have um, those little teeny eye hooks that screw into the top. And I can tie a ribbon, and we can hang it by a ribbon, which I think would be really cute. So I'll probably go with the ribbon. The other idea I have for these little um, IOD gallery blanks in this size, the three and a half by, what did I say they were? By three six, and, five. Three and a half by five and a half, I believe. Let me make sure. 
Yeah, I mean, technically three and three eighths by five and three eighths. So that's about right, right? Three and a half by five and a half. I think it'd be really pretty to do several of the different kinds of cameo molds and maybe frames and then get these and line them up on like a long piece of um, like farmhouse wood or something and have your um, shent inlays on the wood or maybe you could leave the, the wood blank and put the, sh the inlays on here like I did and have a little um, cute wall decor in your home or you could do hooks on it and make it a little coat rack or there's so many things you could do. You know? Put family pictures instead of the rows. Yeah, P put what? Family pictures. Oh yeah, you could just leave the frames open and put pictures of your loved ones in there, my husband said, so. All right, so I don't know if you can see the gold showing up on here, guys. And we're just gonna give the, the rose frame a little goldie. I'm just going to go around that very outer raised edge of the rose cameo with the gold. And my gold is kind of, I didn't put enough, I'm running out. But I like this little skinny angled brush. It's a, a Royal and Lang Nickel quarter inch angled brush. I'm not an artist, so I really don't know what all these are for. <laughs> I just buy them. And use them for whatever I want. Okay. That is so cute. And I'm probably going to, um, I'm going to print out a little, um, nameplate, um, from like a Jane Austen book. Maybe, um, put Emma and I'll decoupage it on here. I forgot to do it and I meant to show you guys, um, but here's an example. Um, this is a Jane Austen silhouette from the book cover of Pride and Prejudice, and it has the book title and the year uh, 1813. It's actually, I flipped it for the purposes of transferring it on to this. And so I just cut out her little silhouette because I couldn't fit the Pride and Prejudice banner label on it. I had to sacrifice it. Um, it, I didn't want it to be too small, but here is the piece right here. And it's like, it says Pride and Prejudice. So if you could just picture, um, this on here like that. And you can even get, um, Tim Holtz, a Ranger Inc. He makes metal nameplates. IOD has na um, molds that make like little labels. Um, I forgot what it's called. Um. I'm terrible, I should know that. It's an older one that I have. Um, but I will post this and show you guys, okay, when I'm done. So that one's done, and we can put the, um, the little hook on here. So, I've already opened that one. So. get them out so it's this little ever built little I don't know what they call these screw eye eyes or eye hooks and this one's a uh, tiny it's a eighth half an inch so um, you would put it in here like this and I would normally take a nail or a tiny drill like a Dremel and make the hole but um, I have this quilting mat under here so I can just line up. Can you mark the middle point with my pencil? There's a, or a pen. Just put a dot where the center is right there since you're over there. Thanks. Like right in the center of, mm -hmm. of here. Thanks. And I'll get my, and when you have teeny little nails or tacks or eye hooks, I take my, these little jewelry, Pliers? I don't know mm -hmm. what they call them. And I literally will hold it like this. And then I can bang it, bang on it and get it into my project. So that's what I'm going to do. And I have a hammer. 
this is gonna be noisy. So we'll see how this goes because I haven't really done the starter nail yet, but just get it going. I think I bent it. No, it went in there, yay. Well, it's kind of slipping out. Like, let me just get it going better. All right. So now we have that up there. Easy peasy. You guys know how to do this. These are things I normally ask my husband to help. <laughs> He's really sweet. He does all my grunt work. All right. Oh my goodness. And you know what? You can you can um, paint this little silver metal hope so you don't have to look at the shiny silver metal. And um, we will string it with a ribbon. So I'm gonna um, go grab a ribbon right over here on my other side. So I have this. I have pink. This is like. Yeah. Oh no, this might work. I have a new ribbon over here somewhere. Okay, you can close up. Okay, guys, so I have this old fashioned seam binding ribbon by Hug Snug. I use it religiously. And I like to actually take yards of it and I uh, wet it and scrunch it and then let it dry and it's kind of like really vintagey looking and then I have this ribbon from May Arts that is like a faux silk which it's more affordable than silk ribbon that they sell but I really love this one and it's a little wide but it would make a good bow um, this one actually matches the inlays really well they both work super well so um but I think I'm gonna try this one so we're just gonna stick this through here, like you do on a when you stick ribbon through a gift tag or something. And let's see, pull that out. Okay. So you're just gonna do just like if you did a gift tag, you know. And then tie it so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I would just tie another little bit of a length here. Not get too fancy. You may need a little bit longer ribbon if you if you really want to make a good bow, but. I think this works. Okay. Okay. Worked my bow here. I think I got it a little crooked. Yep. All right. Let's start over. There we go. Okay, there we go. Now, you just want to take your scissors and make a pretty little cut on the end there. <laughs> Great project. Thank you, Carol. I'm really trying not to go so slow. I am hope I get better at this for everybody's sake. I have another project I want to do with you guys. All right, this one's done. So, there you go. How cute is that? And imagine if you had a few of these you could hang together on a gallery wall. That would be really cute. It'd be cute in an office or a child, a little girl's bedroom. So there we go. We'll we'll hang it up here. And give it give it some respect. So this is an old uh, this is a vintage fairy graphic that I put on here and made, and um, it has a vintage glass button for a knob 
old wire. I just the back with shabby decoupage paper. But that's kind of fun to make. Adorable. Oh, thank you guys. You're so sweet. Thank you, Jill. Thank you, Becky and Carol. All right, next. Okay. I really want to do this big one before I let before we go. Because this is great. Alright, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna mist it down and put these out of the way. And get my ribbon out of the way. All my junk. I don't like clutter. I can't function. Okay, let's get this. Nice and sprayed with my recycled poopery poo bottle. <laughs> I just think that's so funny that I'm using this bottle. It won't stink. <laughs> All right. Like, I honestly, um, I'm the biggest goober sometimes. I truly am. I'm a klutz and a big old goober. <laughs> All right. We're going to, if you um, can't get your finger in there to pull it up, I just get like a, um, a straight pin and kind of lift it. And there we go. All right, here we go. This is the, the big reveal. Now, this has a lot of really strokey paint marks. And um. It's going to be kind of shabby chippy, I think. Um, I think I probably need to let it absorb a little longer. I was trying to hurry up. So let's just give it a chance here before I pull any more up. Absorb. Okay. So... Can you guys see how that's coming up? Everything's coming up roses. <laughs> and they're a little, this is um going to be kind of vintage-y, shabby. Not perfect, but I love it. And you can sand it, you know, if you don't want that much color. Oh my gosh, how cute is that? Okay, we're going to lay this one aside to dry. Oops, where did I put that on the... Okay, the other, one more supply I forgot to tell you about is the Kindest Regard stamp, which is the um, antique handwriting script from an old letter. Um, this is going to go on the frame. I'm going to do touches of the... Um, Kindest Regards script on the um, Rose Scent Inlay. There you go. Can you guys see? What do you think? Do you like it? Is that cute? And this is going to get the um, Jane Austen um, silhouette that I made in the pretty ornate frame from the frames mold. And it's also going to get the mini book page in its own frame. And we're going to put that on here. And it's going to be fun. So let's try to dry it really quick. So we can get it on there. And I'll seal everything after. I wish I had time. Yeah. <laughs> and if we go a few minutes over, um, are you guys okay with that? If not, I can, um, I'll just post everything, you know? Yeah, IOD does have the most amazing products, Becky. You got that right. I know you use them, so, um, 
definitely. Um, Becky, what is the name of your YouTube channel? Is it kind of shabby? Can you please refresh my memory? I want to get that right so I can tell everybody. Oh, thank you, Carol. So we're, we're going to try to go an, an extra five or ten minutes, okay? Because I really want y'all to see how this is going to turn out. It's going to be really cute. And then it will be recorded, and then people can fast forward all they want. So this is drying fine under the dryer. It's not smearing or anything. I love it. It's great. This is good. All right, so now we're going to need decoupage gel to seal this printed paper. This was printed on a laser printer. I don't know if you can see it. It says Pride and Prejudice, like an antique book um, from 1813. And we're going to put her on there. So let's get our tight bond. And we just need to make sure... I line these up. I use, what is this called again? <laughs> compass. I use this little compass ruler to line up. Um, so, yes, ma'am, Becky, it's kind of shabby, right? Is that what you were saying? So, you guys should check out Becky Denmark's um, YouTube channel. She is quite the, the maker. She creates some really pretty stuff, and she's got a good following on there, and she uses IOD products, so you could probably get some great inspiration from, from Becky on her YouTube channel at Kinda Shabby. Yeah, Kinda Shabby, that's right. I um, don't always remember things well, and I think it's because maybe I'm older now, but I don't have a thyroid, and it's hard remembering stuff when you don't have the right amount of thyroid hormone, I'm telling you it's hard, you know? Okay, so this, I really want to paint this, but I'm going to apply it and I'll paint it after. So, yesterday I was looking at this, trying to decide which way I wanted it, so I think the big frame is going to be in the middle with the book page, and the book page is going to go underneath. And I'm going to fit it right there like that. And it was a perfect fit. I didn't even have to trim anything. It was a miracle. So, that's going to go there center, front and center. All right, now, I need to mark where I want my page. So, I don't want to use, I have a pencil right here, sweetie. There we go. Yay. I got my pencil. So, this paper, I'm just going to do a little pencil point at each corner of my piece of paper. All right, the frame is gonna cover them so you don't have to worry about leaving marks or getting rid of them. Okay, and I'm gonna get my decoupage gel here. And get my brush. This is a golden gel medium. This stuff is great. I like it for decoupage and sealing art and papers because it does not yellow and get funky over time. And you get good dimension and it's uh, great. It gets a little thick when it gets older or if you leave it open too much like I do, but that's okay. It's, it works. So, turn on really quick. Find your corners that you marked with your pencil. Right there. Smooth them out. And got my handy dandy. There's um on the IOD paint blades, by the way, these are great. They're made of silicone. They're super quality made. And um, I mean I'm not trying to to sell them or anything, but honestly, these are the best things I've ever had. Um they don't drag and I just they're so smooth. They're really good. All right, see, that's on there nice and good. And now we're going to get our tight bond. There we 
go. Thank you. My assistant, my my sweet husband, knows knows ahead of me what I'm looking for when I go to find something. <laughs> That's amazing. You found a good one. If you if your husband will schlep your stuff to a vintage market or support you in your craft shenanigans, you found the good one. He's so sweet. Puts up with everything. Okay, you really need to make sure you get your glue spread evenly on this big mold. You don't want it to be popping up or anything like that. Okay, I think that's good. So, get that on there. Oh, that's so cute. Okay. So just press gently so you don't mess up your There you go. Now, before I applied the frame, I would have taken my my gel medium and sealed the um, piece of paper before I put the frame over it. But I'm just going to go ahead and give it a little coating of decoupage. Um, Artist gel medium. It's a little crooked. Let me slide that over. I think we're centered now. Okay. So... And this, like I said, this was laser printed and laser ink is good because um, like inkjet ink would smear as you're putting your wet mediums on it to seal them. You could, you could spray them, but then the spray might make the ink get funky. Um, I've had that happen with inkjet, but the laser is great. I think that's toner ink, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a type of ink, so... Oh, boogers. All right, so. And when you're brushing on decoupage gel medium, you really want to try to keep going one way and do light, smooth strokes so it's not so streaky. And you can always sand in between coats of decoupage medium. You can sand with a piece of brown paper bag. You don't even need sandpaper. Okay, so that's on there. And now we're going to apply Jane, and she's going to go on here. And then the other one I wanted to put on here, I took a picture of it last night of how I wanted to do it. I think it was this one. Yeah. So if you get the idea, it's going to be like this. So these are going to get painted to, to coordinate with this one. And this has like this Italian sage green, and it has gold. And it has aging, antiquing gel, and also Amy Howard's Dust of Ages. It was like a gray, grungy dust to make things look old. And um, I'll do that with these two. And so let's just glue this one on. And the other one, too. Is that my brush for the glue? Nope, there it is over here. Okay, so, whoops, I didn't want to put gel medium. That was gel medium, never mind, it's okay. Gel medium and glue together, it'll work. Not, not a big deal. I'm trying to hurry up now. Okay. There we go. So, that cameo is on there. Just eyeballing her a little bit. There we go. And now we're going to put this one. I'm just like the dabbing brush. Always, I always keep towels and stuff handy to dab. Okay. 
Okay. I'm gonna put her on here now. I'll gauge my finger. <laughs> I put a lot of glue on that one. She's just sliding everywhere. Okay. So. There you go. And the beaded, it's kind of like a farmhouse beaded handle. I mean, I'll probably keep it, but I wasn't so sure. I would change that, possibly. But um, for now, I think it's okay. You know, it's sort of a... It's sliding. Yeah. Just slid down. <laughs> okay. So, if you can see that. And we'll get these painted and waxed and aged and all gussied up. And I'll post them for you guys to see them later. And, oh, you know what? We forgot to put our kindest regards. Shoot. So I can still do that. Um... I can still like kind of fit it around there, but I'll finish. I'll finish it up and take pictures, and you guys can see the finished product. And this five by five block, I'm gonna remove the inlay, and I'm gonna put this cube frame right here. And um, I can't remember what I was gonna put on here, but I had I took pictures last night deciding ah. Here's a little rose, and um, here's a pretty cameo, and she is a cute cameo. I used her on one of my Christmas spirit boxes, um, which is, where is she? There she is. I made this for Roy Cycled, um, 12 Days of Christmas, and I never got to finish it that night, but there's the cameo from, the cameo's mold, and this is um, the holly from Bells of Holly Mold. And these are vintage figurines. And we'll treat. And this is from IOD's Trimmings 3 mold. And then these are Roy Cycled decoupage papers. And there's gold wax on there. And this is the um, Christmas Spirit box. Also with Roy Cycled papers around here. On the bottom and on the inside too. So... That was fun. I like making those old-fashioned things. All right. That's it, guys. I hope this was fun, and I hope um, you guys will come back and look at the finished product. I'll have them all pretty for you, and they'll be on the website. If I don't have them on there tonight, they'll be on there by morning. So I'm going to start waxing and get them finished and take pictures for you. Thank you for coming. Mwah. I appreciate it so much. Bye, guys. Have a good night. Thank you, Becky. Thank you, Carol. You guys are sweet. Good night. Thank you, too, Becky. Thank you. I'll see you.